Welcome to episode 15 of Real Health Radio. Welcome to Real Health Radio. Health advice that's more than just about how you look. And here's your host, Chris Sandel. Hey guys, Chris Sandel here and welcome to another episode of Real Health Radio. Uh, Today is another one where it's just me on my own just chatting about a topic. And the topic I want to do today is a day in my life. And lots of times people email me and they want to know what do I eat, how do I exercise, what do I do. And so I wanted to do a show where I give you a bit of a rundown of what I do in my life in terms of work days, weekends, that kind of thing. None of this is to say you have to follow what I do. It's not like I'm doing it the right way and if you just follow what I'm doing, then it's going to help you out. I just want to show you how I do things, explain how I do things, and maybe you can pull some stuff from that that's useful. Maybe you don't. Um, But as I said, I get a lot of questions and emails and when people meet me, they'll ask me different questions. And so I thought this would be quite useful. So to start off with, um, where I live, I live in a, a small village in Kent. Kent's about, or where I am, is about 90 minutes outside of London, so south of London. And I moved here about two and a half years ago. And where I am, I'm in a little cottage on a manor estate. And a manor estate is basically there is a big manor house that's just at the end of the drive near us. And then there's other houses all along the estate. And there's 100 odd acres here. And basically, we are out in the wilderness. So lots of fields and forests all around, lots of farming area. Um, I live next to a stable. So there's a stable with... 70 odd horses just next door. Our next door neighbor has her own private stables where she has four or five horses. So everywhere that I want to walk, I can walk out the the front door, the back door in any direction and can literally walk for two, three, four hours without seeing anyone and just walking around fields and forests and just tons of greenery. So very, very fortunate to live where I do. And that then has a real big impact on the way that I'm then able to, A, live my life, but B, the kinds of things that I choose to be to be doing. So on a normal day, I wake up somewhere between 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. That happens regardless of whether it's a weekday or a weekend. I'm not very good at sleeping in. Um, Typically, I find, and I say this to clients, is that you should be getting up pretty much a similar time on the weekend as the weekdays. If you're having to sleep in for long periods on the weekend, it's often an indication that there's a lot of sleep debt going on. It could be also because someone then goes to bed a lot later on a Friday or a Saturday night, and in my case, that doesn't happen that much. So maybe that's why I wake up around the same time. But typically, I think people should be waking up around the same time on weekdays and weekends, and I find that I wake up somewhere around 6.30, 7 o'clock. At the moment, because it's starting to get darker um, and we're into nearly the winter months, um, I use a dawn simulator in the morning. Um, For anyone who doesn't know what that is, it's a light that comes on slowly, so it's like a sunrise going on in your bedroom. It's really helpful. It's something I've used probably for the last five or six years, um, only in the winter time. I don't need to be using in the summertime. The room that I'm in lights up enough in the in the summer, but in the winter, it means that the difference between waking up in pitch black because you've got a beeping phone next to you or something where you slowly start waking up anyway from the light, and normally I'm awake before my actual phone alarm goes off. And it just makes it a much more pleasant way of waking up in the morning time as opposed to that beeping sound when you're in complete darkness. So I get up, I then make breakfast. So I live with my girlfriend. I've been going out with Ali now for nearly five years. Um, I am the cook of the household. She's not particularly into cooking. She can cook when she puts her mind to it, but it's not her most favorite thing. So I'm definitely the cook within the house. I also have the privilege of working from home. So I do all of my consults from home. I work from home every day, whereas she has to travel into London. And so she spends anywhere from three and a half to four hours traveling a day. Um, So 
I'm the one that then makes breakfast in the morning so she can be getting ready and getting out the door, etc. So breakfast is, for us, we do a fair bit of eating. Both myself and her are big eaters, um, and breakfast is one of those meals that we both like to eat a lot of food at. It's normally eggs in some form, so whether that be scrambled eggs or fried eggs um, that we then have with... Uh, a big thing of fruit, so a fruit salad. Um, it might be often I'll do some potatoes or sweet potatoes that we have with that, and that can be um, often fried or boiled and then fried or just boiled and then having some of that. I, I do much better personally with foods that are of a lower water content within the morning. So even when I'm having fruit, I'll be going for more things like bananas and mangoes and very high calorie content um, fruits in comparison to going for things like melons where it just leaves me feeling really cold and urinating every every hour if I have that kind of stuff for breakfast. I was doing a lot of stewed fruit for breakfast, so stewed pears, stewed apples, but I was finding that same thing was happening, so it just doesn't work so well for me. Um, we'll often have pancakes for, more, for breakfast, so I'll probably do that once a week. Sometimes we'll have French toast, um, although I'm not the greatest with bread, um, so I tend to not eat it so much or try not to eat it so much. Pancakes don't seem to give me too much of a problem. Bread doesn't seem to sit that well with me, and I normally have a tolerance for it. Um, a couple of times a week, probably not too much of, of an issue more than that, and it starts to play out with my digestion. Um, and so with breakfast as well, I'll have a coffee um, that I have some gelatin in. Um, but yeah, breakfast is a pretty substantial meal most of the time. So after breakfast, Ali will go off to work and I will then go and take the dog for a walk. So I have a, or we have a chocolate Labrador who is nearly five now or a bit over five. Um, and so in the morning we'll go for a walk for around about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, and there's lots of different trails going in various different directions for walks that span anywhere from about half an hour through to a couple of hours. And I'll just pick one of those in the morning and go for a walk with the dog. And it's a really nice way for me to start the day. I don't do any formal meditation or anything like that. Me going walking and because of where we are and where I can do that walking and a lot of it's in forests, a lot of it's um, over these beautiful hills and countryside, that is my form of meditation in the morning. And so walking around, playing with the dog is a really lovely way for me to start the day. I also use it a lot to do thinking around what do I want to be writing blog posts on, what would be a really good podcast. So Often, um, the walk might not be so meditative in the sense that I'm pulling out my phone and I'm putting things in the notes section on my phone. And then I come home and I've got different folders and different Word documents of ideas where I'll then type that stuff up. Um, but getting up and doing that walk first thing in the morning is a really nice way to, to start. So I then get home and we'll start work anywhere from about uh, nine o'clock, sometimes a little earlier through till about 9.30 is when I start. Um, and it will then depend what I have on that day. So I split my week up where I have client days and non-client days. So Tuesdays and Wednesdays are the days that I see clients and I will see a client at seven o'clock in the morning. I'll see a client at eight o'clock at night and anything in between. So it just depends on when I need to be seeing people and that's on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And then the rest of the week is me doing my own business stuff. So that's me writing articles. That's me recording podcasts. That's me doing research or doing investigation or reading books or taking programs that I, um, um, I'm paying to be doing or creating programs that I'm going to be selling. All of that stuff is then done on those other days. So it will depend on what I've got going on, will depend on what then happens for the rest of the day. Um, I will sometimes have a snack in the morning, sometimes not so much and just go straight through to lunch. Um, I do pretty well on dairy. So I eat a fair bit of cheese. I eat a fair bit of yogurt. Um, cheese more than anything else. I real, always have lots of different cheeses within the fridge and we'll have that a lot with different fruits, um, with different root vegetables. Um, they're typically my, my preference in terms of carbs. I also eat a lot of rice, uh, white rice, but that's more for, for main meals. 
and then for lunch um lunch will be often what's left over from from the night before whatever i do for dinner or i'll make something from scratch and i'm, I'm very lucky that i live in um or i work from from where i live and so i can go downstairs and i can make myself hot lunch and i will do that pretty much every single day um and as i said i eat a fair bit of rice um as my carb and then there will be some form of protein with that whether that's a tin of tuna whether that is um, a little bit of chicken or a little bit of fish or um typically it will be um meat or fish based but not always i do have some beans and i do have other forms of protein that are vegetarian sources um but with my with my main meals with my breakfast lunch and dinner i do try and have a fairly decent uh portion of protein with them just because i know for myself i do better when i'm doing it that way so then in the afternoon um again at some point i will take the dog for a walk and that can be anywhere from 30 minutes to 40 minutes, 50 minutes, normally a little bit shorter than the walk that was going on in lunchtime, uh, sorry, in the in the first half of the day. Uh, my girlfriend also has a horse. So at some point, I will normally need to go out to the field and bring the horse in or take the, f- the horse from the stable out to the field. So that's often done when I take the dog for a walk or at some other point. So breaking up the day, and I'm a big advocate for getting people to be spending more of their time on their feet and walking. So a lot of the time when I'm working from home, um, sorry, working where I'm not seeing clients, um, I'll do it while standing up. Um, And I will also try and, as I said, get outside and be walking a lot at different points during the day. And then for me, I finish up working somewhere on the the non-client days. It will be somewhere around about seven. Um, And then on the client days, it will just depend who I have in the evening time. And most evenings I will then make dinner from scratch. Uh, most of the time, there's probably a couple of nights a week where I don't, I'll get a takeaway or I'll get um, something that's it's already been made and I'm just reheating it up. Um, but most of the time I'll be making stuff from scratch. And again, it's mm, typically will be some form of root vegetables or some form of rice or some meat or some fish or I'll make fish cakes or I'll make a curry or I'll make um, some steak with some vegetables and and whatnot. So it is mostly um, meat and fish and root vegetables and that kind of thing. But I don't want to give you the impression that that is all I eat. It is definitely not the case. Um, I am someone who is quite happy for food to be functional a lot of the time. And it's quite funny, sometimes uh, my girlfriend will work from home and she will just look at what I'm eating for lunch and be like, I can't, I don't understand how you can eat this. It is just so boring because it will just be some potatoes that I then have with some protein. And I'm quite happy a lot of the time for it to be functional food. But what I would say is then in the evening time, when I do have a bit more time to make stuff, I will happily spend more of that time making something that's more uh, palatable and more enjoyable. Um, But I am just really realistic, and I say this a lot to clients, if you've got to know when are the meals that you can cook that are going to be amazing tasting and you have more time to be creating something that's very plate worthy and looks fantastic and tastes fantastic, and there's other times where you just need to be cooking something and be done with it within 20 minutes so that you can get on with something else. And so then in the evening times, it will normally be chilling out. Um, We'll often be reading books. I read a lot um, and there's always a big stack of things that I bought that I'm trying to get through. So a lot of reading in the evenings. It's time where I'll catch up with Ali and so we'll do some chatting. Um, Watching some TV, some movies. I'm not a huge one for watching a huge amount in the uh, the evening time. I do love movies and love documentaries. I probably watch uh, a movie or documentary like three or four or maybe even five times a week. Um, but a lot more of that is done on the weekends um, and not so much in the evening time just because I know personally looking at a screen doesn't serve me well before going to bed and it really starts to mess with my ability to get to sleep so I'm pretty good with just not doing that in the evening and then spending more time on the uh, weekends on the daytime um, doing some doing some of that stuff and then in terms of going to bed normally going to bed getting into bed somewhere around about 9 30 10 o'clock um, and then asleep by 10 10 30 most nights and both Ali and myself are people who do better by getting a lot of sleep 
And so I would much prefer to be getting to bed earlier. And it doesn't matter how good health I'm in. Um, I just can't get away with doing six hours a night. And I know there's lots of people who can do that. And if that works for you, then great. But I know personally, sleep is one of the things I need to prioritize. So I will always make sure I'm getting into bed early, uh, well, as much as possible. There will be times when it doesn't happen. But when it's in my control, I'll make sure that happens. So in terms of supplements, I know a lot of people want to know what supplements I take. I don't use a lot of supplements with clients and I don't use a lot of supplements with myself. And maybe I'm slightly biased and the reason I don't use a lot of supplements with clients is I've never found that they've worked particularly well uh, for a lot of the time. And there are exceptions to this, but most of the time I don't find they work that well on me. And sometimes the assumption is that they don't work that well on clients. And when I've used them historically in the past, when I was using them a lot more with clients, I just wasn't seeing the results that much. So really the only supplement I take is gelatin. And the gelatin powder uh, by Great Lakes, they do one in a green tin that you can dissolve into different liquids. Um, And they can be cold liquids and it will just dissolve properly. And so I use that each day. And I'll probably have have somewhere around about two or three tablespoons at different points throughout the day. I'll have it with coffee in the morning and then uh, normally have it with a tea in the evening time um, and then some other point during the day. In terms of exercise, I said that obviously I walk a lot with the dog during the day um, and I calculated I walk somewhere around about 60 to 80 kilometers a day, uh, sorry, not a day, a week with the dog. So I cover a fair bit of ground. In terms of other exercise, I do um, circuits twice a week. Um, There is a great place just near where I live. Um, There is a barn. Someone owns a house that has an amazing barn that they've then converted into um, a little gym and they're the two people who own the place are both personal trainers. It's called Clay's Barn. Um, if anyone wants to look it up, they've got an Instagram account, they've got a website, um, and they do personal training there and they do circuits classes. And it's fantastic. They both know uh, their stuff really well. And it's about five minutes from my house. And it's that typical thing in the country. I was out walking the dog, bumped into someone, got chatting, and she mentioned that she is a personal trainer, runs a a gym, and we walk past the house. It's a house I walk past all the time, and I started going there since the beginning of the year. And so that is amazing, and I really love doing that, and that's on a Monday and a Wednesday morning. Um, And then I'm a member of a golf course out here, and I used to play golf as a kid and then stopped doing it um, in my teenage years when it became uncool to play golf. Uh, and then picked it up again fairly seriously about three or four years ago and been playing a lot more. And being out where I am, there's a ton of golf courses and I became a member of one about two years ago. And I play, it depends whether it's summer or winter, but at the moment probably playing about two rounds a week and in the summertime was playing more than that because it doesn't get dark till nine o'clock or 10 o'clock. And so I could finish up uh, work and maybe finish up a little early and go play golf. Um, so it's another thing that I really love doing and I'm getting much more into it. It's a, a great form of exercise. And so on the weekend, I'll normally play weather permitting um, Saturday and Sunday at some point. In terms of then how I work, and I said that I do things differently depending on if it's client days or non-client days, I'm one that's very good for scheduling. So I will normally wake up in the morning, work out what I need to get done on that day, and then write a list. And the list will be from 9 a.m. till 11.30, I'm doing this. From 11.30 till 12, I'm doing this. And just put it all in there and I'll put down what time I'm going to have lunch, what time I'm going to walk the dog, etc., etc. And that really helps to keep me focused. And I will always put whatever is the most important thing that I need to get done that day is the first thing that I start on. And I really keep out of my emails as much as possible. And so I'll only go into emails once, maybe twice a day, and I will respond to whatever I need to do, and then I'll try and get out of them so that I can actually be proactive in creating stuff as opposed to just constantly within the emails and being really reactive. And so that keeps me much more productive. And each week I have a goal of I'm going to write 
one blog post and do one podcast from my site. And if you're on my mailing list, you'll probably have noticed that you get an email about a podcast every Thursday and you'll get an email about a blog post normally every Monday. Sometimes it's a Tuesday, but it's normally a Monday. And that's the goal that I have. And I, I want to keep to that. On top of that, I will do stuff for other sites, but I want to be having that amount of stuff going out for, for my site. And I know personally that I do my best writing um, first thing in the morning. So if I'm writing a blog post or needing to write a talk or any of those things, it will be the first thing that I start on for that day. Um, just because I've known through the years and from experience, that's how I get the best amount of work done. Um in terms of my weekends, as I said, weekends I'll, I'll pl be playing golf. I'll normally be um, taking the dog for a walk again. Um, it's where I will go and do a big shop. We are very lucky where we live. There are different farms around here with farm shops attached, so um, can get fruit and vegetables from them. There's also a massive Waitrose. There's other supermarkets around here, so we can go to all of those um, amazing butchers um, around here as well, which is fantastic. So you can go, you can chat to them, all of the stuff, even if it isn't organic or biodynamic or anything along those lines, it's all locally sourced. It's all of very good quality. Um, and so I feel very lucky to have that. Um, also a really good fishmonger around here as well. So I tend to try and get to um, the shops and to the markets, etc., on a Saturday or a Sunday so that that stuff is then in the in the house for the week. Um, we have a garden, so I'll be doing some gardening on the weekends, again, more so in the summertime than in the winter wintertime, um, and watching movies, some documentaries. I normally will spend a couple of hours on a Saturday or a Sunday doing that. Um, it's one of my pleasures. I really am fascinated with, with documentaries, and so I love just nothing more than sitting down on the couch and, and watching some stuff. Um, and I'm a huge advocate of Netflix. I really think it's a, a great service. I can always find stuff to watch after often a lot of trawling, um, but I will find something eventually. Um, and yeah, on the weekends, I'll probably watch a fair bit of TV, but I don't do that much in the week and I'm doing more of it uh, during the daytime. And I'm normally sitting down to watch something on the couch at three o'clock in the afternoon, four o'clock in the afternoon after I've taken the dog for a walk twice and played around a golf. So I don't feel particularly guilty about it because I've been rather active for the whole time. In terms then of like going out and that side of things and alcohol, um, I'm not a big drinker these days. Um, so I'm quite happy to go. I can go a couple of weeks where I don't touch any alcohol at all. There'll be other times where I'm opening some wine and we'll have a glass of wine each night through the whole week and finish off a bottle of wine uh, across that whole week where just having a small glass each night. And then there will be other times where I do drink more. Um, but alcohol is just not something I, I consume that much these days. Um, but as I said, it's not to say that it doesn't happen. I know last weekend with the um, World Cup on with the rugby, with Australia playing New Zealand, I definitely went into London and had a fair few drinks while watching the game with some friends. Um, but those nights are much more few and far between than they used to be in my younger days. So that is it. I mean, hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into my days and my life and what I do. Um, as I said at the beginning, I mean, I'm not saying that this is how everyone needs to live their life and this is what you should be doing, but hopefully it gives you a bit of an insight and maybe there's some, some bits and pieces you can pull from it. So that's it for today's podcast. Next week, I have another guest on the show. So join me then. Thanks for listening to Real Health Radio. If you are interested in more details, you can find them at the Seven Health website. That's www.sevensevenhealth.com.